RBC Capital Markets, Gerard Cassidy joins us now to discuss the outlook for financials in the fourth quarter. Uh, good to have you, Gerard. Listen, it's not a pretty picture other than J.P. Morgan stock. I don't have any of the big guys up at all for the year. So what do you tell investors to potentially get them excited, if anything, as we finish out the year? Thank you for having me on the program. And I would suggest that it really is going to come down to when the Fed reaches its terminal rate for Fed funds. What we've seen in past tightening periods, David, is that when the Fed reaches that uh, terminal rate, the bank stocks, that's the catalyst for the stocks to do better. Because what happens is six months after the terminal rate, deposit rates stop going higher. But the yields on their assets, when they reinvest the cash flows from their bond portfolios, loan portfolios, they're reinvested at much higher yields and the margins start to expand again. So I think that's the real catalyst is if you believe the Fed is finished by the end of this year, margins should bottom out sometime in the second quarter of next year, if not sooner. And that would obviously be a positive event for the banks. Right. Now, well, obviously, we debate that endlessly here on CNBC. But um, when do you buy the stocks typically in advance of your expectation for rates uh, topping out? No, that, that's a really good question. And if you look at 94, 95, you might remember back then, Greenspan raised rates from 3% in February of 94 to 6% in February of 95. Stocks bottomed out in the fall, late fall of 94. Same thing in 04 to 06, in that tightening cycle. The Fed ended in June of 06, stocks bottomed at the end of 05. So right now would be the time to start, if you believe that the Fed is finished or is about to be finished, right now is the time to buy based upon the past history of how these stocks have behaved. What about Citigroup? I wonder if there's a there's a catalyst here with the, the reorg. It, it has it underperformed in the past quarter. It's underperformed for a long time, the past few years. I, I spoke with Jane Frazier, the CEO, just on Friday about what she's trying to do. Just, just listen to this. We're focused on simplifying the bank. So it's much more about eliminating the complexity, flattening the organization, taking out layers, um, getting easier for people to work together and to deliver to clients. We will give a number in the fourth quarter earnings uh, once we've begun um, the work all the way through the organization, cascading it down. So we expect to be in a place that all of that org change will have finished by the end of the first quarter. So some news there on the time frame, Gerard, and also that, that she's going to lay out numbers on, on potentially job cuts and cost savings, fourth quarter earnings. Do you buy it? It's going to be interesting, Sarah, because City is, as you know, over the years has a number of reorganizations and has struggled. Uh, Jane Frazier is turning around, you know, a battleship. And what we really need to see is the outcomes of these changes. And as the outcomes become apparent or materialize, that's when the stock, I think, starts to work. I mean, the effort is obviously very good. It, it, what she's doing needs to be done. But I think investors, because they've been scarred with this stock for so many years, they're going to take a wait and see attitude. And when, when they start to deliver, we would expect the stock then to react very favorably to these moves. What about sort of the broader fundamentals in the economy? Uh, you know, loan growth doesn't appear to be particularly strong right now. I'm just curious to get your take in terms of how that will impact, even if we expect that rates have topped out. It's interesting, David, because loan growth has clearly slowed down. It typically slows down with the slowing economy. Uh, if you go back over 50 plus years, loan growth in the U.S. banking industry mimics the nominal rate of growth of GDP. But the real next uh, question investors have to ask themselves is what's going to happen to credit quality? Because if we go into a soft landing like we did in 95, the stocks are going to have a marvelous year in 2024. On the other hand, if we have a real credit problem, not as bad as 08, 09, nobody expects that. But a real credit problem will weigh on the stocks in 2024. So credit is the real picture that everybody has to focus on. And right now, credit continues to be strong, with the exception, as you know, you guys have talked about it downtown office real estate in our major urban markets is a problem.